we're going to be looking at the two ways that plywood is attached to the top plates in the various seismic retrofit guidelines. We're going to be looking at the history behind these differences, and we're going to take a look and see which one of the two is the best way to do it. So this first way to do it, we see here in standard plan A, you see how here at the nails, we have the nails up here at the top, and we also have nails here down at the bottom. Now this is all the way along the plywood. You see the nailing of the upper top plate and the lower top plate all along here. Now we see this in a few different guidelines and we're gonna look at every one of those uh, in the rest of this video. So if you come over here, this is from, uh, this is another way to do it. This is from uh, chapter A3 of the International Existing Building Code. And you see right here, there's the nails in the upper top plate only. Right here, this, this section right here, that is the lower top plate at the bottom, and this is the upper top plate. So you see there's absolutely no nails right here in the lower top plate. So we're gonna look at both ways of doing it and see which one is the best. So this is from FEMA P1100. That's the most recent retrofit guidelines from 2019. And then you can see that the nailing is only in the upper top plate. So this plywood nailing is just like it was for the guidelines for seismic retrofit of existing buildings that was published in mid 1990s. And the way Jim Russell actually originally intended these, these plywood nailing to be. So you can see it's very clear here. It says provide all required nailing at upper top plate and you see the nails right across here along the upper top plate very clearly there are a few nails here at the bottom there's one here at this lower top plate one here one here. nails in the lower top plate are simply a big waste of money for no benefit so as you probably noticed all the retrofit guidelines ultimately referred back to Jim Russell's original work in the guidelines for the seismic retrofit of existing buildings as far as the plywood nailing goes they all recommend 15 30 second plywood they recommend 8d nails they recommend uh, four inches on center on the nail and they recommend nailing into the upper top plate only. You, we don't see that. And the shear walls can resist 380 pounds per linear foot. Standard plan A decided to change all of that and let me show you how. You see here where it says four inch staggered spacing typical. That means you go here, four inches later you go here into the upper top plate, four inches later you go into the lower top plate, four inches over you go into the upper top plate, etc. So what you end up with is you end up with the edge nailing as being eight inches. So we have eight inches here to here, eight inches here to here, eight inches here to here. And when you only have eight inch edge nailing, the capacity of the shear wall drops down to 190 pounds per linear foot. So remember earlier we saw that the plywood is all nailed at 380 pounds if you put them uh, four inches on center on the edges. Well, in this case, they're only 190 pounds, which is a whole lot weaker. Let me show you exactly why that's a problem. Just, so in effect, along the entire upper top plate, you have a nail that's every eight inches. Now the building code does not even have a table that, that recognizes uh, you know, shear walls that are nailed on the edges at, you know, every eight inches. But if the nails are eight inches apart into the upper top plate, you can only resist 190 pounds per linear foot. However, if you put them every four inches into the upper top plate, you can resist double that at 380 pounds per linear foot. So if you use this double top plate nailing, you'll need to install twice as much plywood as you would if you simply put the nails in the upper top plate. So the way it would actually work is, this is a floor joist, and a floor joist is a part of the floor, it supports the floor you walk on, and what happens is when this slides this way, we want to keep that from sliding. So what we do is we take this piece of metal right here, it's called a shear transfer tie, and we nail it to the joist right here, and then we nail it down here into the upper top plate. Now the upper top plate is only two inches thick or inch and a half, usually two inches. The nails that come in here are an inch and a half. So all the nails go into this upper top plate. So what that means is earthquake force comes this way, pushes on the shear transfer tie that goes into the nails that again are only inch and a half. 
The, so that force goes into the uh, upper top plate. It pushes it that way. And then that force goes into the nails that are also in the upper top plate. And then eventually, the you know when this piece of plywood pushes on the top like that, the bottom of it also pushes that way into the bolts. So these nails here on the lower top plate, they're not connected to the shear transfer tie. Therefore, they are not doing anything. So